the network. Oh, what's up, everybody? Once again, it's Ram and Sean, and this is Inside the Network. It's our series where we show you exclusive content, interviews, and artist sessions from inside of brandmannetwork.com. And this one is a very special interview with a guy by the name of Cash Mace, man. And this guy is an artist, songwriter, but like I'll just go into some of the things that we touch on in this interview. One, not even deep into the interview, at the very beginning, we talk about how he sent the DM that scored him over six figures that's over one hundred thousand dollars with a music placement just sending a dm to someone not even related into music a cold dm he didn't even know so definitely stay tuned for that we talk about how he got a feature with tory lanes and the wild thing he had to go through to even make that happen him grinding it out working in oil fields just learning how to get his pen game strong in the first place and, and becoming someone who's brought and owned his own position there's so many things that artists can get from and just people who are in music can get from in, in general but i think it's just entertaining straight up like it's an entertaining insightful interview in the first place so without further ado let's go ahead and get into this thing it's the network yo mace what's up bro like what first of all i i, I i'm glad to have you on man the, the, the our you know our convo that we had before I, I love the story so just first of all like introduce yourself to people tell them who you are kind of how you think about yourself as an artist and what you want to accomplish uh, i'm cash mace uh aka benjamin franklin you know what i'm saying i'm the president of writing you know what i'm saying but uh, <laughs> uh anyways you know I, I see myself you know as the most versatile artist in the game right now you know what i'm saying uh, I, I go alternative i do hip-hop um, I do, you know, island music, you know, I do a little bit of everything, but um, for me, I, I started off as a writer in a studio, you know, I was writing for a studio in Denver, Colorado, um, and uh, that, that's how I got started pretty much. Uh, my family has done music my whole life, but uh, that's how I got started, you know, and was able to make strides and moves, you know, as far as being an artist, and uh, yeah, that's where I started. Oh, Denver. Is there, is there a scene in Denver? <laughs> nah, there ain't no scene out there. Nah, it's, <laughs> okay. it's, but it, it's 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 cool though because if you're a known name there and you built you know somewhat of a fan base, everybody knows who you are. It's not like mm -hmm. an LA or like in Atlanta where you know it's a big scene and so you know you're just you know a small fish and you know in a big pond. Uh, it's more of like you could be a big fish in a small pond in a place like Denver. But there's no, there's only a ceiling though in Denver. Like you you max out real quick. Yeah. Okay. Got you. Well, hey man, I want to hop right into one of the more the interesting one of the uh, more interesting things that we talked about initially, and then get into some of the deeper things of what you got going on currently, because you scored a placement right for a big company straight yeah. off the of DM. Yeah, right? yeah, billion billion dollar company, man. Uh, it was it was life changing for me. Uh, you know, it was one of those things where I just took a chance on myself. You know. I told myself, I was like, you know what? I'm a dope writer. I was writing for the studio and um, was getting a lot of good feedback. Uh, Max Martin, DJ Frankie. DJ Frankie was on um, the hit record, See You Again, uh, with Charlie Puth and Wiz Khalifa. He was the producer on that song. They started off in the same studio that I was writing at. And so we had those ties and those connections to them. And so they would send records over because they're um, under APG. And they would send us records. So they would have me sing the top line and write it as well. And, um, you know, so that's, that's, that's what I was doing. I was writing with them. And then I was like, you know what? I'm pretty dope. I feel like I want to try to go out and get my own placement because I was writing with other writers when I was doing that. Mm. And I just thought, you know, I can do this myself. You know what I'm saying? Cause I felt like my, my pen game by itself is strong. So I was yep. like, you know what? I'm going to take a chance on myself. And um, I decided that I was going to write a song about women's undergarment. I wanted to test myself. You know what I'm saying? Like I want, I wanted to step outside the box because the type of song I wanted to write was something way different than what, you know, my fans and what I'm molded as, as an artist. And mm. so, you know, I decided to step outside of my comfort zone and um, write about women's undergarment and the company that I knew about uh, from a story about a woman named Sarah Blakely, who started a company with $5,000 and, um, you know, just going out and doing the research, you know, on fabric and things like that how she started a company with $5,000 and became a billionaire. I remember that story and I remember the company being called Spanx. And I was like, you know what, I, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna write a song about Spanx. 
I don't want to just write a jingle. I want to write a hit record. Like, I don't mm. want to just, I don't want it to sound like, oh, okay, we're going to take 15 seconds here, 10 seconds there. No, I was like, I want to write a Bruno Mars type of hit record, bubbly, but not too, not too corny, but still hip at the same time. So, you know, I decided to go out and take the, the last bit of, bit of money I had at the time because songwriting in the studio, if you don't place, you're not making no money. And on top of that, I was working in the oil field in Colorado. That went under. And so, you know, me, I was, I was unemployed. And so I was like, I was living off of what I, the money that I had saved. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to take a chance on myself because I believe in myself so much because you got to be up, you got to be willing to be able to bet everything you have on yourself. Yeah. If, 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 if you want to make it in this game, period, period. And so I told myself, like, you know what? I'm going to take this, this little bit of money I got and I'm going to go ahead, you know, I'm going to write this song about Spanx because people don't want to hear about the labor pains. They want you to show them the baby. And so, you know, I need to come to the table with a product. I want to hear to hear something rather than me come with an idea. Mm. And, and so uh, what I did was, you know, I paid, a, you know, a bass guitar player and then a producer. And um, I went to the studio and, you know, we laid down a track, of, you know, for the lyrics that I had. And um, I decided to DM Sarah Blakely. I was like, you know what? She probably won't respond. She's a billionaire. <laughs> You know, <laughs> she's a little bit different though. I can tell you that. I don't, I don't. I don't think I mentioned it to you earlier, but I actually met her before. Man, she's a little different, man. <laughs> really, really, you met her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I never even met her though, bro. Like, I, never <laughs> even met her. I never even met her. It was all you know, internet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but uh, I decided. I was like, you know what? She's a billionaire. She's been on Oprah. She's been on every TV show in America. But whatever. I'm gonna take a chance on myself. What's the worst she could say? No, or what's the worst that can happen? Her not respond. And the, the best case, the worst case scenario, no, actually the best case scenario, I'm gonna have a hit record regardless. So I looked at it, I looked at it those three ways. And so I decided to DM her, you know, a 30 second clip with like a little makeshift cover, cover that I made for the song. And, um, and, I, and I just told her, you know, in what ways it could help the company. I told her, you know, it could help her reach a different demographic, you know, which is the African-American community you know, with this song, because look at me, I'm a tatted up, you know what I'm saying? I'm tatted up. You see me, I got a do-rag on, but I'm singing this bubbly song, you know, you know, called Spanx about women's undergarment. And so, <laughs> and so, you know, I was, you know, I just told her, you know, in an educated manner, I didn't come at her on some, you know, you know, yeah, you know what I mean? You know, I didn't come at her like that. Hey, that's, that's real. Like I saw the, you know, I got a chance to see the DM exchange. Uh, so like, it was very like it was a very good, a very professional approach. I'll tell you all that for sure. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a college graduate, so you know, <laughs> take pride in that. <laughs> but uh, nah, man, I, I just decided to let her know that hey, you can reach a different demographic through music, you know, which is not the tradition, not the super traditional way for her company because Spanx was built on word of mouth. And so, you know, I was mm -hmm. like, you know what, mm -hmm. you guys have, you know, a market, a need for, you know, you know, the music market, you know, you can help build your brand through the music market. And so um, I pretty much I DM'd her, you saw the DM and um, I DM'd her, took a shot in the dark, shot from the hip and then I uh, went to sleep that night. And then um, I woke <laughs> up and then I woke up the next morning. And I looked at my uh, I looked at my screen because I get my notifications. And it showed that she responded. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy, man. It was crazy. Yeah. And then, obviously, you saw the DM. But the DM said, hey, I love what I heard. Is there a way I could hear more? Send this to blah, blah, blah. Send this to, And then I sent it to her husband. I sent it to the marketing co to the company, the marketing department for the company. And um they loved the song. They loved it. They loved it, man. They loved it. Yeah, she actually just sent it to her husband, too. Yeah, yeah. Her husband, Um, he was in the music industry uh, back in the day. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he Je was. Jesse, Jesse James. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he moved into, like, yeah, other stuff. He, he a dope entrepreneur. But, yeah, that's that's Yeah, fine. yeah, yeah, yeah. He, own, he owns Marquee Jets. So, mm -hmm. you know, he, he, yeah. he's doing something big himself, too. So Okay. And, I mean, so to me, just to even get to that barrier, like, let me hear more right says a lot and to me though what i liked about what i got to hear though you said that stuff that you said about hitting another demographic and blah 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 right but the, the track wasn't like far left from the current brand either at the same time it yeah. had a little little flavor to it you know what i mean <laughs> but it but it wasn't it wasn't like off brand for them and i think that's yeah. important it wasn't like you were just trying to like 
say, oh, no, y'all need to go over here. Because when we talk about adding value, the only reason I say that, man, like so many times when people hear add value, add value, people usually like offer something and it's like, I don't need that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, no, nah, that's not valuable to me. That's value to you and you hope and you trying to just get put on through it. But yeah. like, your song, man, nah, it was, I mean, you're a writer, so I'm not, I'm yeah. not, I'm not surprised, but at the same time, I'm, I'm pleased to hear that you, especially from a brother, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, of course, of course, of course. Of course. <laughs> that way, that whole, that whole, the route you did it, it was, it was well done, dog. I well, yeah, appreciate it, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, actually, I did my research, though. Like, I heard the story, you know, back, like, in 2012. Yeah, 2012, uh -huh. I remember that story. But wow. um, I started I started taking sentiments, you know, from the story. Like, she was going to call the company, you know, she it was between two names, Open Toad Feel Good Delilah and Spanx. Mm. And so in, in the song, I say, Open Toad Feel Good Delilah, miss me with your party stopper. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so, so I added these sentiments in the song. So when she hear it, she, you know, it was personal to her because she could hear I, her part. Yeah, she, she could hear like, how does he know that I was going to call it open toe feel good, Delilah, because like yeah. it was just in an article that was from way back when. Mm. And, you know, like me, I just, you know, I, I just did more research rather than just what I already had. I did more research so I could incorporate it in the song so it could be more personal rather than just, oh, he did a song and it has the words thanks in it. Mm -hmm. No, no, I actually added these sentiments in it that she could relate to because she's like, man, I remember that. I remember that. And so I think that was one of the biggest reasons why it worked, because when she heard, you know, these certain things in the songs, it was like, wow, this dude really did his research. Mm. Mm. All right. That, that's huge, bro. That, that's huge. Yeah. Especially for folks, anyone, anyone who wants to be a writer, right? You really need to do your research. Like we'll get into your artist side of you later, but like just the actual writer, when you're writing for other people, you have to pay attention to those yeah. other, where their nuances, what's unique about their story, because you yeah, want yeah. to feel like their voice, not just yeah. a dope song and throw them on top of it. So uh, you probably kind of already had that ingrained in you. Yeah, well, that's the same. That's the same thing I had to do writing for that studio because, like, I wrote on records that were sent, like, you know, intended. I'm not trying to be no name dropper or whatever, but like what you're saying as far as knowing their cadences, knowing how they, their, their patterns are, you know, the way they deliver. But like, I wrote all stuff for like Jason Derulo and, you know, um, Pitbull and like Akon tracks. And so think of it. So me, I had to pretty much imitate those guys when I was, you know, singing on these tracks and try, try to sing it as best as I could to their abilities of what it would sound like if they did it. And mm. so, you know, when you say that, whatever, like that's exactly, you know, what you have to do. You have to do your research. And so me, I would go listen to, 10 different Jason Derulo songs and hear the way he does his runs or the way, you know, he delivers, you know, in a verse or, you know, a hook. But um, like, yeah, you pretty much, that's what you got to do though. You got to do your research. You got how to. Did you, how'd you get into writing, man? Because a lot of people would love to be even where you've been in the writing space. Yeah. How did that happen? Uh, for me, I was actually just, I was going to the studio re recording my own stuff. And um, it just so happened, like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the studio owner, he happened to come through when I was, like, recording something. And he stopped and he was like, hey, is this you? And I was like, yeah, yeah, this is me. He was like, you wrote this? And I was like, yeah, I wrote this. Because <laughs> like, Dem Denver's small. Denver's real small, man. So for me, it was, he was like, you wrote this. And I was like, yeah, I wrote this. He was like, you know, uh, when you're done with your session, I want you to come talk to me. And this is the studio owner. He worked at Sony Music, you know, for 15 years. He worked, he worked with, like, Biggie and Pac. I mean, not Pac, but Biggie and Diddy. And these are people he worked with at, when he was at Sony Music back in the day. And so, um, he, you know, he, after my session, I went to speak to him. And he said, you know, what do you think about, you know, writing for other artists? And I was like, you know, it'd be a dope opportunity. Like, I never have done it. And I never thought about it because I was focused on myself as an artist. But, you know, I was open-minded open to it. Uh -huh. And so um, he had, he just had me come in, and um, I was in there with two other writers. Um, there was a, you know the, he was an engineer slasher writer, but what they started doing was since I was a fresh set of hands and you know ears, and they would um, send me home with the beat, and then I would write at home, and I would come back the next day, and we would record all day. And so I would come and sing the top lines to these songs that you know I to bet. these beats that they sent me. That's no, all good. Okay. But yeah, yeah. But that, that's how I got into it. You know, I just happened to have like a stroke of luck where he heard 
and he saw what I was doing, and he was just like, man, this guy has a gift. And then when you were sending stuff off, I mean, then just the gift kind of reflected itself. You just kept, you kept yeah, doing yeah. it. Yeah. Well, it just, it, it made me more, because like being around other, you know, talented minds that can, other creative minds that, you know, it helped me. Because like me, I wasn't really good, good at melodies before. And then I, there was a singer, there was a singer slash writer that was there. He was super dope at melodies. And I saw how he was, you know, hopping in, you know, um, on a verse and, you know, creating these, you know, riffs and melodies. And I'm just like, man, that's dope, or whatever. And so I started working with him a little more. And so my melodies got better. You know, mm -hmm. like me, the, the lyrical side, that's easy. Cause you know, I started off rapping as a kid and I'd rap in high school and do these, you know, rap battles and stuff like that. And so like lyrically, that's easy for me. Like writing is easy, but like the melodies was the hardest thing. And so for me, being around those other talented minds, you know, it really helped me evolve as an artist because it was like, it was pretty much like going to school for music because I was, I was unemployed, so I was in the studio five, six days a week for like at least 10 hours. At least 10 hours, you know, for this was for like five, six months straight. Man, man, I, yeah, that, that's cool for real. <laughs> yeah, 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 it was serious, man, it was serious. I like the fact that you said that you weren't good at melodies, though, because, you know, those things that we have naturally, it's easier, it was harder to explain. But yeah. since you started from a standpoint where you did, where you kind of had to intentionally get better at melodies, yeah. What are your tips, or what can you say helps to make a good melody? In your opinion? Um, I feel like you just got to understand, you know, the the instrumentation, like just the the beat in itself, whatever, and learning how to ride it. Like that for me, that's that's what make good melodies. Right? It's how do you ride the beat, you know, and and what's pleasing to the ear. What 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 sounds good? You know, if something sounds bad, you hear it, and you're like ah. Like, like that, that's, that wasn't a good sound. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like, when you hear something that sounds pleasing to your ear, you know, you automatically know. It's, one, it's either you have it or you don't in, in that aspect. Like, you can hear it. Mm. Okay. Got you. So it's more of a, like, especially when you said that instrumentation, I mean, it's more about the, the, the melody, as in the words being said, is cool, but more so being in harmony with the music itself. Exactly, with the instrumentation, man. Like, it has to, it has to flow, like, cohesively. Like, you got, it has to sound good. Like, you, you, yeah, obviously, the only other person that, that, that can get away with that is Blueface. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, he's offbeat, he has no melody, but it, it works for him. But, like, other than that, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, somebody that I think that has real dope melodies is Post Malone. Or okay. like a, you know what I'm saying, Young Thug, he's dope at melodies as well. Like, mm. so like, th those are a couple of two different artists. You know, one's hip hop, one is, I think, alternative hip hop, I would call Post Malone kind of in that wave. Mm. But um, I feel like those, those two guys are dope at melodies. But some people yeah. that too. So what made you decide that it's time to focus back on being an artist again? Uh, f for me, it was, you know, um, I had success. I wrote a song called Don't Want to Know, and I had success on YouTube with it. You know what I'm saying? I hit over a million views on it. And um, so for me, it was like, damn, like, and all these, you know, females were DMing me like, oh, my, you're so hot, blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, <laughs> I was like, I was like, I'm a good looking cat. You know what I'm saying? I'm a good looking cat. You know, my voice is good. They keep referring to my body. This and that. I'm just like, I need to focus on me. Let me focus on me and stop handing out these potential hits to somebody else that's already on when I can get yeah. myself on. Right, right, right. Dope. Okay. Yeah. And it was just like literally from there on, you were like, hey, I, I can write for you if y'all come to me, but I'm not actively seeking this, this right. Exactly, thing. exactly, man. I was just like, I'm going to just, no matter what it sounds like, whether it's pop, whether it's alternative, mm -hmm. I'm going to sing it regardless. It doesn't matter. I'm going to sing it. Whatever, whatever I write, I'm going to put it out myself. Like, I'm not going to just keep giving stuff away. Dope. Okay. And, I mean, now, like, would you, where would you say you are in your process? Are you, are you signed? Are you, are you independent? Uh, I, 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 I'm independent. I've been offered some deals, but they're bogus. You know, bogus deals. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. I'm trying to, I'm, you, you, know, you know what I'm talking about. Bogus deals. <laughs> yeah. I've been yeah. offered bogus deals, but I'm not a dummy. I've been in the game for like seven years now. You know what I'm saying? I, yeah. I've been screwed over plenty of times. So, you know, I learned to, you know, pretty much put myself under performance rights organization, get this, get that. You know what I'm saying? Pretty much set it up because I've had music stolen from me and they mm. put it out even though I paid them for a verse. Like stuff like that happened. And I, le I learned in the process, man. And so for me, I've been offered bogus deals, but I'm just like, 
right now, I'm just like, you know what? Like, I'm my pen is getting better and better, and I feel like, you know, my fan base is growing. And um, I just got verified on Instagram just, like, a couple weeks ago. So, you know, like, my reach is starting to, you know, pick up a little bit more. And so, uh, and I've had some, you know, people DM me that, you know, I've seen on television that said, hey, I like your music. And so, for me, it's just like, nice. it's like, okay, you know, you know, I don't need their validation, but they see me now. You know that what I'm saying? know. It's happening. Yeah, yeah. It's the network. All right, pardon the interruption for a quick commercial break because, again, this series is brought to you by BrandManNetwork.com. And, of course, you probably recognize that name, and that's because we signed ourselves that same mentality we preach. It's something that we also practice because it allows us to control and actually be able to not have to dilute certain information that other people would not want us to put out. Now, with that in mind, just to make it clear what BrandManNetwork.com is. It's a space that's all about progress, all about action. This is not some kind of space where artists just go take in courses for entertainment or anything like that. We leave that to YouTube for those people who aren't serious. This is a specific space for people who are dedicated to progress in their career and building their own systems and their own team where they don't necessarily have to wait for a record deal or they don't even have to wait to find a manager, right? We're seeing artists in four months make more progress than they've made in two years of just taking in this random research on YouTube or Google or all these videos that pop up on Instagram because it's not about the insta inspiration in here, it's about the progress. So we're an artist development platform where we get your brand right, your content right, and we also help you build a marketing plan, a custom plan to you to actually make progress. Keep that in mind and let's get back to the interview. It's the mat work. They, 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 see, they see me now, you know what I'm saying? So for me, it's like, you know what? I'm going to hold on for a little bit more. I'm going to try to, you know, it's, it's the hard way. And, you know, I've been grinding my whole life, period. So, you know, I've worked in the oil field, worked 26 hours, 36-hour days. So I was like, you know what? I'll just, you know, continue to do what I'm doing, grind in the dirt and figure it out. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. And then once I have a little bit of leverage, enough uh -huh. leverage, then I'll, you know, think the route of, okay, we, we could work a deal out. Hey man, like all right, I gotta stop you for a second because I know what you mean because you did like shifts and you don't go home. But you talking about 26, 36 hour days and, and that's what I used to work when I was, when I was in the oil field. That's what I used to work. What is what is that like, bro? I gotta hear a little bit of like that, uh, about that. I ain't never met nobody in the oil field before. Yeah, man. So like I would get up at what like four, like four four thirty in the morning. Where I had to drive to a place called Fort Lupton. It's like middle of nowhere in Colorado, and um, we uh, we fill up our truck. We'd hop in the truck. We drive out to like middle of nowhere and um like a board drill. <laughs> Y'all would drive from middle of nowhere to, to middle yeah, of Yeah, from the middle of nowhere to the middle of nowhere. Like <laughs> where, where literally when you look out, all you see is is grass and wheat all over. That's all you see. And that's it yeah. all around you. And you know what I'm saying? So we'd be out there. I have a jumpsuit on, hard hat, safety glasses, gloves, man. Like, it, it was crazy. It was crazy. But we'd be out there all day, all night, rattlesnakes, snow, anything we was out there man for hours and hours and uh pretty much like my job was we would dig with like high pressure water to find like um electric lines or you know gas lines underground before they start drilling for oil yeah sheesh man that, that's dope that's i mean you know dope to hear about it no I don't yeah know yeah, yeah. That's, no, that's hey, it was, hey, look, look, look it, it sucked it sucked but the paychecks bro like it was crazy because, I can imagine people aren't really doing it like that. Yeah, because I was I was getting like eighty hours a week. I was getting like eighty plus hours a week. Sheesh. Okay. And so you know I was on OT by the third day. Like every, every time by the third day I was on OT. Oh man. Okay. <laughs> Bringing yeah. it in. Yeah. Okay. Well, like back to your artistry, man. Um, I mean, obviously, like we were talking, and then you mentioned how you got something in the works with Tory Lanez. Tell me yeah, more about yeah, that. man. Uh, yeah, we got a record. We got a record together, man. We got a record together. Um, it's cr it's crazy because that was that was brewing for a while. Like that took that took pretty much like a year to happen. You know what I'm saying? Because um, mm -hmm. me, I moved out here, you know, and I ran into somebody I knew from college, and um, you know, he he hung out around a certain group. You know, you know how Atlanta is. Atlanta is more, you know, it's more who you know, not what you know. Yep. And. Uh, he hung around a certain group, you know, he introduced me to some, some cool guys, man. And um, so I started hanging out with them and, you know, we took trips to Miami, blah, blah. But well, come to find out one of them who's a friend of mine now, he ended up, uh, he ended up being, you know, friends with somebody that's a part of, you know, Tory Lane's team. Gotcha. You know? 
And so um, he would always feed them, be like, hey, you need to hear Cash Mace. You need to hear Cash Mace. Hey, he's nice. And so he sent them a, a couple songs, and it was like, oh, bro, it's dope. He was like, oh, yeah, he was, like, they were vibing to it. And he was like, hey, yeah, he's dope, man. We need to we need to figure something out. And so, like, that happened, like, a year ago, like, when I first moved here. And um, they came. he came back, like, a month later and was like, yeah, yeah, here's the price. And I was like, mm, there's no way that's happening. <laughs> 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 he came back with the feature price, and I was like, uh, yeah, about that. Uh, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. But, uh, but that happened. That happened. And um, and then they came back for Winterfest, you know, and I was like in December. Yeah. And um, they came back December of, of last year, and uh, they, we got invited to Winterfest. So we was on, we was backstage, we was on stage with Tori, and um, it was a good time, man. He, he's a, he's a cool dude, man. But um, they invited us to that, and then finally I was like, you know what? I need to figure this out. I'm gonna come up with that money. I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but I'm gonna come up with it because like we we end up. We ended up going to the club with them, the whole nine, and the person that was that um that liked my music, that was part of the team that said he could make it happen. He was like, "What's up, man? Like, yeah, you want to make it happen?" Like, bro, and I was like, "Yeah, I want to make it happen. Whatever. Like, just let me get back to you. I'm gonna make this happen. I'm gonna figure it out. I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but I'm gonna mm -hmm. make it happen, though, because like for me, I believe in myself so much, and my and I believe in my playing game. I believe in my talent, and I'm willing to go to the end of the world and back for it. And on top of that, me." I believe one of the most talented artists in the game is Tory Lanez, period. The most ver one of the most versatile artists, one of the most talented artists in the game is Tory. And I was just like, True. who could I pair up with that I could make a hit with? And I was like, it's Tory Lanez. If it's not Drake, Drake's an automatic hit. That's an automatic hit if it's Drake. And obviously Drake's out of reach for a lot of people. <laughs> but uh, I was like, Tory, I was like, if me and Tory get on the track together, it's, it's gonna be a smash. It's, it's gonna be a definite smash. And so, you know, me, I went out and I tried to, you know, I seek one sponsor, you know, because I got some friends that do real estate business and things like that. And so, you know, I was just like, hey, bro, um, I came up with a contract with him and was like, hey, you know, if you do this, you know, you get a percentage of this, blah, blah, whatever else. But then the other thing I did was I sold my car. I sold my <laughs> car. I sold my car, bro. I sold my car. I was just like, you know what? Like, this this opportunity, this might be my you know only opportunity to get a song with him. He was about to go on tour with Drake, and so I was like, you know what, his prices are gonna probably go up. They're already giving me a you know you know uh, kind of a deal off of the muscle, off of the strength. You know what I'm saying? So I was just like, I gotta come up with this. And so for me, yeah. went to the bank. Bank said, um, okay, <laughs> the car. All right, this car is ours now. And I was like, all right, it's yours. Give me the cash. Yeah. And so, you know, that happened. Um, I hit up the, the team member and he was like, all right, come down to Miami. Um, we going to be in the studio on this day. Uh, let's do it. And so, you know, we popped up, me and my team, we popped up. And um, Tori was like, all right, I'll record yours in the next five minutes. He was working on a, he was working on a song that song he had with Tyga. He was working on some other stuff. But um, he was like, I'm going to get to yours like in 10 minutes or something like that. Literally, he listened to the beat for two minutes. And when I say this man went in the booth and recorded this verse in five minutes, <laughs> five minutes. Yeah. Done. Done. And in my okay. mind, I'm just like, hey, you might want to take a little more time on that. I just gave you a lot of money. Like, yo, hey, I, just, hey, I just gave you my life, bro. Like, hey. <laughs> I can't like, do everything yo, I have, bro. Like you don't want to proofread that verse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you don't want to go back and do a like an edit or something. Like I don't know, bro. Like I just yeah. gave you my life, and you, you took my life in five minutes. <laughs> yo, that's wild. But yeah. was, was, was it sharp though? Was it was it something like? Yeah, hey, he killed him. I got a little piece on my it's on my page. You know, I got a little piece of it in the studio. Oh yeah, but, um, okay. But uh, nah, he killed it. He killed it. I was like, as soon as, as soon as the beat came on and I heard him, I was like, smash. And I already knew. I was like, smash. So the, as soon as the, the way he entered the song, I was like, smash. It's over. Word. I mean, that's like he's a, he's a beast, man. He's one of those. I mean, like you said, he's one of the most talented man. Like the the, the pin game, pin game. That, yeah. Those are those artists are different because I mean, it's one thing to just do the freestyle thing or whatever. But like he yeah. for real writes. He writes for people who make like. Who are aren't aren't even in the genre, you know what I mean? That's that's what I, and that's what I'm saying. Like for me, I was like, 
that's why I was able to. That's why I. You know, that's why I took that chance, bro. Because I was just like, I believe in myself so much, but I was just like, you know what? I want to put myself on somebody on on a song with somebody else that I feel like I'm in that bracket. I'm in that bracket. I'm in that lane. I'm in that bracket. No pun intended on the lane, but <laughs> I'm in that bracket. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, you know what? I want I want to put myself up, you know, next to Tory. And I'm not saying like in a competition manner. Obviously, rapping is a sport, whatever else. But it's more of like me. I was like, you know what? I could sound just as dope on a song right next to Tory Lanez or whatever. And so the funniest part is, though, like I wrote the song at first. I wrote it. And then Tory came on. He did his verse. I literally had to go back to the studio and I rewrote my shit. <laughs> oh. Hey, 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 I had to, bro. Like, it's like, hey, I had to. I was like, because like cause me, I had wrote that song like a couple days before I went to the studio, you know, um, in Miami. Mm -hmm. and, um, I, and I felt like I was a little lazy on it. I felt mm -hmm. like it was more of, you know, me segueing into just the song being a Tory song and not a Cash May song. And I was uh, just like, nah, this needs to be a Cash May song featuring Tory Lanez. And so, you know, I heard his verse and I was like, you know what? Let me let me, let me go back and let me change something real quick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I went back, man, and I, you know, I pinned, I pinned something even way, even like way, way harder, bro. Way harder. That's up. That's yeah. up. He, he started working. When do you think you're going to release that? Uh, I'm not, I'm not too sure yet because, like me, um, I have some things scheduled in the works. Like, I'm supposed to go to Montana to do a performance. Um, I'm doing a bunch of pre-releases, so I'm going to go to Montana, I'm going to go to Denver, I'm going to Kentucky, and then I have some more, you know, waiting on them to be confirmed, but um, I'm going to do pre-releases, man, and then try to build some hype around it, and then, uh, and then, you know, once I'm getting a feel of, you know, how fans are reacting to it, you know, then, then I'll release it, because for me, there, there's no rush on it, you know, for me, you know, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint, so... Well, 100%, man. Yeah, I mean, you definitely, look, you spent that money on the, uh, on the feature, you got to spend that time and money on the marketing. Might as well. Got to got to do that right. right. No, this has to work. <laughs> like, <laughs> it, hey, it has to work. Like, there's no other. It has to work. It's going to work. And that's, yep. that's the way I operate. You got to take chances on yourself. Like, sure. you have to. For me, everything that I've done has been me taking chances on myself. You know, people laugh at the name Cash Mace when I first started. People laugh, you know, at my first songs. But, like, me, I'm a determined individual, period. Like, you can't stop me. Like, me, there's... There's a the thing of being realistic and not realistic. And me, I knew I could write. I knew I could write, but it was one of those things where, okay, I got to get my melodies better, you know? And then once I started getting my melodies better, then people started really, then I started seeing traction more. More people coming in saying, I love your music. Oh, I've been listening on Pandora. I've been listening here. And then, and then I just started getting better and better and better and better and better. And now it's just like, I could write, some, I could write something in my head, in my sleep wake up and just go to the studio and record it like right now. Like it's not, it's not even a thing anymore. Yeah. You, you mentioned like that really betting on yourself, man. I'm, I'm, a, I'm huge with that, man. Like when I say I sign myself at the beginning of my videos now, you yeah. might, you might know that I, I launched a network and everything. And yeah, the whole, brand man, brand man network. For sure. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> and like that whole, I take that mentality seriously because you know, obviously, I sign myself relates to the music industry, but really just that idea of controlling your own situation, even if you are in a label or something like, but educate yourself, your whole process of I went yeah. through some stuff and now I'm going to the performance rights organizations, like having all my stuff in order. You know what? I'm a I'm a take that bet on like, <laughs> you know, like getting this feature and you, yeah, you yeah. set up a contract for yourself. You sold, you mm -hmm. sold your car. But I mean, then you even moved to Atlanta in the first place. What was that yeah. move? What was that process like? Because to me, you, you exemplify that whole idea of controlling your own situation. Well, for me, like I got that. So my video went crazy on YouTube and then I got that deal from Spanx and I was like, I'm ready. That's when I knew because I, like, I had the business side down, but I was just waiting on, you know, a song doing fairly decent and then me landing some kind of solidification that people could take, take me seriously that, mm -hmm. you know, that I have a major placement. So when I come to Atlanta and not be just some super small fish in a big pond. Cause Atlanta is huge. Like I came with a placement. I've met a million people with placements. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I met a million people that have, you know, hella followers. I met a million people that are verified. I met, it's just, Atlanta is, is drowned with it. But like mm -hmm. for me, I was like, you know what? I'm ready now. I'm ready to compete. 
Like yeah. before it was more of my pen's nice, da -da -da, but I haven't done nothing yet. Like I haven't done nothing yet. Mm. And, you know, in Denver, I already had reached that ceiling anyways. You know, I had the biggest following between, you know, for the hip hop artists in the area and whatever else. But um, for me, I was like, once I, my video went crazy and I landed that song deal and I got that big payday, I was like, Atlanta. I just knew. I just knew it because I didn't want to go back home. I'm from San Diego. I didn't want to go back home. You know, to, I didn't want to go to L.A. or whatever because it just it's not my vibe. OK. Um, but I wanted to come to Atlanta because there's a lot of, you know, black people that are being successful out here and so for me that was huge seeing people like myself that are being successful obviously there's the scammers and the other stuff that's going on <laughs> and you know and and people have tried it with me but i'm i'm smart about the game now like me i understand the game i know how to get myself on platforms myself i know how to do this i know how to do that so when people come to me with bogus stuff trying to scam me i'm like dude i already know this that that and third i've been studying this for seven years like so we there's no way around it <laughs> like there's no way you can you can get me yeah. so, so you know once once that um whole deal with spanx happened i was like i'm ready it's time it was just that moment it was like ding it's time Bet. and so within like a couple months I was out of there okay dope man that's, that's dope i love hearing that but i also love to hear the fact that you still had you had some idea of strategy and some level of accomplishment not just the whole story of i'm gonna wake up and i'm gonna just go and that's cool right to have that idea just take a chance like they do in the movies and all that stuff but the idea that you said you know what i want to achieve something right to hold to to be able to really have some level of credibility and not look completely like i'm in need of somebody right and yeah, yeah, yeah. To, it was, to, and to get to get to that next level, Atlanta was the next level. Atlanta was like, because to me, I was I always looked at Atlanta like a mecca. It's like it's like a mecca. It's like yep. you you're gonna go there. Everybody can sing. Everybody can rap. Because like I had, I was on Instagram, and I, you know, so me, I'm like a nerd on Instagram. I'm looking at all these artists from Atlanta and seeing what's different. You know, who's doing what and what sounds are different. And so for me, it was like a lot of people are not doing my sound in Atlanta. You know, it was it was either soul singing or it was the dunna ma dunna, the kuna matata rap. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. It it was a kuna matata matata, a kuna matata, and I was like, well, I don't do that. You know, I can get busy like that. I don't do that. And so I was like, okay. And a lot of people always compared me to you know my vibe to like a party next door or like a Bryson Tiller. People always made those comparisons. So I was just like, not a lot of people are doing that. You know, besides you know I think his name Six Black or Black. Black, black, yeah, yeah, yeah. His his vibe is somewhat like that, or whatever. And there was um, there was a couple other guys that I had saw that were in Atlanta that were similar vibe to me. But I was just like, there wasn't too many people doing what I was doing. And yeah. so I was like, you know what? I can come out there and I can kill because a lot of the women that were on my page that were liking my stuff were in Atlanta. And I was like, Pfft. I was like, mm. well, I I cater to you know young black women and a lot of black women like you know in my songs. And so I was like, I need to be in Atlanta. So they can actually see me in person, you know, actually performing and moving around the city. There it is. There it is. Yeah. So it's a lot more. A lot. See, I, I like hearing that backdrop to the because for every artist, it might not be Atlanta. But yeah, considering some of those points that you did, they might be able to figure out what city makes sense for them. Yeah. That's what's up, man. That's what's yeah. up. So, like, just to get like kind of some to summarize things and wrap things up a little bit, man. Because I know we've been chopping it for a while, and there's so much that you have coming. Where, what do you see yourself maybe in a couple of years? And after a couple of years, because I know you obviously will probably be some level of a larger artist. What's your your end goal, or one of your bigger goals? Right? Is it like record label direction, or of getting out of music? What, what does that look like? Well, in a couple of years, I see I see my I see myself winning a Grammy. Like that's for that's for show for show, whether it's as a writer or as an artist, period. Nope. I see myself winning a Grammy, period. And uh, you know, that's gonna happen. Um, but um I started my own, you know, smaller record label. Me, I wanna educate other artists, you know, so they don't get taken care taken advantage of. Like the stuff that I learned throughout the years, I wanna teach other artists how to self educate themselves, you know, mm -hmm. and how, you know, they can get tools, you know, on the internet. All you gotta do is Google. You can Google a lot of things. You can Google a lot of things and you can find a lot of things and educate yourself. So me, 
I want to give the tools to other younger artists, you know, and I don't, and I don't want to put them in a, you know, a shitty deal. You know, I'm gonna put them in a deal that's fair. You know, because okay. me, I'm, I'm not a money hungry. I'm not a money driven person. Obviously, you need money to survive and eat and do these things. But I'm not greedy in that aspect. I've never been that way. I grew up with nothing. I've had a lot of money and I've had no money. And for me, I love music. I love I love the craft of music. And if I could earn a living making music and taking care of my family. And, you know, even if I made one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, if I made one hundred thousand dollars, a year, I'm cool because I'm getting to do what I love for a living. And, you know, I'm good because I don't care about chains cars like jewel i don't care about none of that like that's like that's not even me like if you'll rarely see me with a chain on or anything like that's not me in the slightest so for me i want to educate other artists and show them the game that i learned on my own and so they can keep on growing on themselves whatever and they could be whatever they want to be and like mm -hmm. i don't want to only go after artists that are already have a platform like the labels do like you got to have two hundred thousand followers and a big buzz and a big wave right. i've seen a lot of artists that have, you know, 2,000 followers and they are dope. When I say dope, like they are dope. But they, just don't, they don't know the market inside. They don't know, you know, the business side of it. They don't know how to put themselves out there via social media. They don't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. And so like me, I want to get artists like that, that could potentially write for country, you know, singers, that could write hip hop, that could write pop, that can write in any genre. Because now, not only can they write, they can sing, they can rap, they can do anything. So they're versatile. So now I want to create a label like that where it's not just fast food music. I want it to be, you know, music that land that, uh, you know, stand the test of time. Mm. You know, those are the type of artists I want to sign under me. That's dope. Like that, even to me, even the concept, right. Of just a, a label who serves artists who are versatile and builds, builds itself out to serve those many different talents. That's interesting. Yeah. Concept. Dope. Dope. Hey, man, I love it, man. I love it. Anybody who's, who's uh, you know, watching, you can definitely follow my man right here, <coughs> Cash Mace, that's C-A-S-H-M-A-S-E. Check out Don't Wanna Know, by the way. Really dope track. Is there anything else that you that I should uh, drop in here before we get out? Uh, man, just, just, just come, come show some love, man, um, and, let, and let me know what y'all think, man. Uh, you don't got to like it. You don't got to love it. But just let me know what you guys think of the music. You know what I'm saying? Show some love, man, and spread positivity, man. 100%. Man. It's the network.